you're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. If you'd like to learn more about the Bearded Theologians, you can go online at beardedtheologians.com, where we have past podcasts, blogs, and a couple items for sale. So check us out, beardedtheologians.com. Thank you for listening, and enjoy this week's show. You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks and Zach Bechtold. So this week on the podcast, um, looking at the lectionary like we do when we're kind of lost in thought and we're trying to center ourselves on something and we have to land somewhere, um, we were reading through uh, the Psalms this week and uh, Psalm 14 uh, kind of came up and popped up to us. And so Zach, as you uh, think about Psalm 14, what are some things that come to mind to you? Yeah, certainly, as, as we like to do, uh, I want to read you the, the scripture. It's a short, short one. Um, and remembering that, that psalms are, are just that. They're, they're songs that uh, David or whomever writes um, really is as poetry, as reflections upon what, what they're seeing at the time. And uh, I love that this book of psalms is, is full of um, celebration. It's full of lament. It's full of doubt. It's full of questions. And Psalm 14 doesn't disappoint uh, in any of that. So hear, uh, hear from the psalm. Full say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and do evil things. Not one of them do anything good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humans to see if anyone is wise, to see if anyone seeks God. But all of them have turned bad. Everyone is corrupt. No one does good. Not even one person. Are they dumb? All these evildoers devouring my people like they were eating bread, but never calling on the Lord. Count on it. They will be an utter pedant because God is with the righteous generation. You evildoers may humiliate the plans of those who suffer, but the Lord is their refuge. Let Israel's salvation come out of Zion. When the Lord changes his people's circumstances for the better, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will celebrate. And uh, gosh, when I hear that, it, it, always, it kind of makes me laugh a little bit because um, it's, it's very, very clearly David reflecting upon what he's seeing uh, or whomever's writing it, reflecting upon just what they're looking out upon in, in society and in the world. And, and I feel like we've all had those moments where we just look around and go, is everybody just dumb? What's happening? <laughs> Have we lost all all of anything, right? Common sense, you know, just all of the things, right? And um, I, I love just that honesty, um, a very harsh honesty, you know, but just that idea of like, what is, what is happening here? And um, it, it, it just dumbfounded, right? <laughs> I, I, I think I think you were dumbfounded by the uh, scripture for today, and oh, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> Are they dumb? <laughs> like it just resonates. <laughs> it does. Um, you know, I, I look at this, and the, I think actually what caught me <laughs> when I was reading this, looking for something for us to do today, the um, the very first line: "Full say in their hearts, there is no God." They are corrupt and do evil things. Not one of them does anything good. Um, I think of how often have we been foolish? Um, and and not that we would ever say that there is no God, but how often um, do we not put the God, do we not put God at the center of what we do? Um, and we put ourselves, our own interest, our own feelings and thoughts and all that stuff into that that's what it is, whereas we really should... You know, if we took put God in our equation when we were thinking about things and thinking about how we were going to act, um, how would that change us? Um, what would what? How would it change our decision making? Um, you know, and that's something. Um, as I think about that, when we're foolish when we don't follow God and what God is calling us to do. We are foolish when we really don't keep God at the center of our of our lives, and it shows. Like it shows. Um, and like, as I read this Psalm and as you were reading the Psalm, that's kind of what came up is how are we, uh, being foolish? And then like, you know, what, um, how do we not have God at the center of our lives? Right. Well, and, and I think the thing that we have to remember about that, cause we, we've all heard the sermons, we've all, uh, you know, heard folks, uh, oh, you got to put God at the top. Right. Um, but when we read something, a scripture like this, or hear a sermon like that, we have to be intentional about not 
then turning and looking around the room and going, all you people, this <laughs> yeah. is for you, right? Yeah. Uh, and when we hear that, you know, fools say in their hearts, there is no God, they are corrupt and do evil things. Um, it's often, we are often not the first people we look at to take that in and go, mm, where have I missed the boat, right? We look at everybody else, much like David does here. What are you guys doing? right? Yeah. Uh, what's going on? Uh, instead of starting with himself and going, where have I, where have I missed the mark? Where have I fallen short? You know, how can I do better? Uh, and, and just we, as people, I think it's human nature. We often think we're doing pretty great and then start passing the buck to everybody else. Um, especially when it comes to faith and relationships with God, we don't want to see that part of ourself. Um, there's a very, um, there's a big, very big humility there to say, you know what, I'm going to humble myself and start with me and say, I've put something else ahead of this, ahead of God. And how do I then correct that? How do I then move forward? How do I then come closer? I always think of it like this is that, um, we have never been given authority to judge other people. Right. Um, yeah, we sure and, do like to take it. And <laughs> And I, I, I have, I have scoured the scriptures. I have scoured the scriptures to look for when Jesus appoints us to be judges of people. Um, I have yet to find one. If um, some of you biblical literists out there want to find one and point me at it, I'd be glad to see that. But um, as I read scripture and as it reads me, um, I have yet to have had that revealed to me. And so I model that in a sense of that. You know, I, you know, and as a pastor, that's one of the struggles as a pastor is that, you know, people look at us to hold people, like to judge people. We, we weren't even, we're not even given that authority. We are called to be examples of Jesus. And, and where we fall from that is when we, um, uh, when we don't keep God. And I really do believe that one of our issues that we have going on right now in the world is not keeping God at the center of what we do. And we become self-centered and individualistic. Um, our God is a communal God that wants us to be in community. It wants us to be together and work together and willing to work uh, on things to, for the betterment of society and community. And when we um, put ourselves in the center of that, when we want our way versus the way of God, um, that's where things go awry. And, and that's actually, as I read this, like, obviously they, they forgot God in the equation of really what they should be, how they should be living their lives. And, and, and that's something I think we all wrestle with. It's not something, you know, I haven't perfected it. Um, I'm far from it. Um, I'm still learning and growing and, and we are on a lifelong journey of faith. It's not, we're not perfected in this life. And um, I think that that's something we have to hold in attention. Um, but, you know, the world doesn't understand that and judges us harshly. Right. There's a difference in uh, putting intention and um, purpose in our faith and putting God first and believing that we are God's special people. And even if we just proclaim God, everything is going to be okay. Right. Yeah. There's a big difference in that. And I think, I think what you're, what I hear you getting at, uh, what I see a whole lot, uh, not even in our, just not even just in our country, but across the world, you know, the whole God bless America, uh, mentality that, oh, we've gone away from God. And, and if we'll just get back to God, right. We'll be fine. COVID to go away, the United States will be back on top, you know, that, that's not what putting God first is. Um, putting God first is starting with yourself and not betting on any hedge of protection, not betting on any kind of magical thing that's just going to make everything better. Putting God first is, is that intention to live out our faith in such a way um, that we're examples of God's love and grace, not that God's doing anything for us in return because of our faith. Right. And, and I feel like we get lost in that of, Oh, if you'll just put God first, our economy will be back in order. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> I've for one, don't believe how that that's how that works. Um, and, and like you said, you point back to the scripture here and it's kind of David looking around going, if you guys would just listen, you know, uh, if we could get back to some sense of order here and, and why we do what we do and how we got to where we are. Uh, which is always funny when it comes for David, right? Because uh, he's he's the man of great faith, yet he struggles just like the rest of us. And so, uh, and has those frustrations and 
I mean, we well, even see it with and, Jesus. Jesus gets frustrated that people just do the thing. Yeah. I, well, I, I look at it like, you know, you, you <laughs> I get tickled when people say, like, we need to put God back in the classrooms. So you don't think God's in the classroom now? Right. Right. Like, so then how does your image, and, and this is a question I, I ask people that I know that can like wrestle with this. Mm-hmm. Then what does that say about your image of God? Right. Right. And, and that if we believe in a God who's always with us, ever present, then, you know, God is in the classroom, whether it's mandated or not. Um, it's how we model our lives. Um, that doesn't mean we have to say a prayer together. That doesn't mean that we have to read scripture in a public school classroom. I, those are things I just, um, I, I believe that, you know, unless you're theologically trained and, and, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. That's the, you know, a fourth grade classroom that's trying to study fourth grade ge- geography you know, unless you're talking about the religious implications, but which if you talk about, like, if you look at Israel, like the messiness of that, yeah, you do have to talk about faith a little bit, Mm. but that doesn't mean it has to be forced or, you know, like held over. Right. And And so maybe, maybe that's the question today, right? Where, where, when we see that in our lives, when we say that out loud, you know, we got to put God back at the top. What does it really mean for you? mm. And is it a, is it a model of everybody else needs to do something to make it better for me? Or is it what can I do in my faith, my relationship, my actions to come closer to God? So you're asking people to be held accountable for their actions and inactions. Oh no, Zach. Like, oh no. <laughs> like, what we're gonna, else are we going to do here? Preacher, you, you're, you're messing, <laughs> preacher. You're messing. You're messing. We're holding preacher. people accountable. We're not judging them on this day. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you're messing, preacher. I quit, quit, quit meddling. Okay. I'll um, <laughs> so we're going to stop meddling in, in your uh, spiritual lives today. And uh, we're going to encourage you to go to beardedtheologians.com and um, check out all of our great content. Man, you know, you think about it in the last really five, almost four and a half years, now four and a half years, uh, we have some great interviews and we just encourage you to go back and listen to those. Um, and if you're on a long drive, um, I was talking with a friend the other day about he has a long drive and he's looking for a podcast to recommend us. Well, I would recommend listening to all five years of Bearded Theologians <laughs> and see what that does. Um, but you could fit into a three-hour car ride. <laughs> you probably could. Well, a little bit longer. We have a couple, you know, Jerry Herships alone. Those are two, that's two hours right there. Um, and, um, you know, encourage you to go and listen um, and like and share and uh, connect with us uh, all through social medias. You can find us at Bearded Theologians. And so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. I'm Zach Bechtold. Thanks for checking us out. First, guys, I want you to subscribe and like this video. And put that thumbs, push that thumbs up. Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all social media outlets. You can check out old episodes and more information at beardedtheologians.com. Thanks for checking us out.